Rub up your engines! You think it's bad in the United States? It's even worse than the rest of the world. Global debt is now at $305 trillion, which is $45 trillion more than pre pandemic. Now, it's bad enough that the U.S. banks have 78% percent of the GNP in debt, 78 percent in debt. So you think, wow, that's pretty bad, you know? Check out the rest of the world, like China, Mexico, Brazil. Some of them have 250 percent of the gross domestic product in debt. They're borrowing even more money than we are. That's the problem with the world is everybody's borrowing money, and now the interest rates are going up because inflation got so bad, the governments had to raise the interest rate. If they didn't, then, hey, one day maybe a loaf of bread will cost you $500, right? They had to. Well, now they got the big problem that these governments have been running on borrowed money all over the world, not just with us, right? And now that the interest rates are high, they can't pay the interest. So they're like, oh, my, we're even further in debt. What are we going to do? We can't pay it, blah, 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 right? It just shows you the system's gone bonkers, and now it's international. It's not like one country versus the other. They're all related together today. <laughs> And they're all borrowing money like wildfire. And now it's come home to roost that they owe all this money, but the interest rates are up. The interest rates, when they were close to zero, that meant you could borrow all the money you wanted. You're only paying a tiny amount back, right? But now the interest rates are getting up and you got to pay more money back, and they can't do it. Plus, the money they borrowed, if the guys want it back, they can't pay it back. They don't have it. They could barely pay, you know, 0.15% interest. And now, hey, with it up there, four, five, six, seven percent, they really really can't afford it. So it's not just the United States, the world's in this debt crisis. And of course, the banks all over the world bit right into it. I mean, I don't know what it is, but I've met bankers my whole life. And I got to say, uh, they're some of the least proficient business people I ever met in my life. Decades. If I go to a bank and I talk to the people, sometimes I did just for giggles. I'd ask their advice on the future, right, for money investments and stuff. And then I learned that whatever they said, if you did a 180, did the exact opposite, you'd probably make make out better because they didn't know what the heck they were talking about, right? These people are not sharp. They're not sharp people. If you go to the banks now, half the time they'll have some affiliate in the bank and they'll say, well, they're not a member of our bank, but they're this, you know, you, we can buy stocks and stuff through them, right? And they're just running part of their bank out to people that are going to sell you stocks, bonds, whatever. They have no affiliation with the bank itself, but it looks like it is, you know? They'll do anything to try to get your money. As the people working there, they aren't that sharp. They don't do that much of anything anymore. Now, when I was young, the banks, there'd be 10, 12 tellers, right? It's bustling. Now you go and there's one or two, you're waiting forever because the only people that go to the banks anymore are really old people and they're so confused. They don't know what's happening. Last time I got behind a really old guy and I'm like, well, I guess it's not just the United States, the whole world banking industry. The crap's going to hit the fan soon. They borrowed all this money. They can't pay it back and they're in so much debt. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Now says, uh, Scotty, I'm thinking of buying a used Volvo C30. 2013, 130,000 miles. They went 9,500. But the deal is not okay with having the car taken to a mechanic for inspection for what or what reason. Don't buy it. Go someplace else. If they will not allow a mechanic to check it out. Now, they could say all kinds of BS. Our insurance don't blah, blah, blah. Baloney. Over the years, I dealt with companies like this, right? And I tell my customers, don't buy it. Tell them they can send a salesman over. And the honest ones would eventually send a salesman over. The guy'd meet me at my place. The Volvo dealer salesman would show up with the car and they'd show up and I'd say, look, I'm checking the car. And I'd be nice to the guy. I'd say, look, but don't give me any baloney. I, I don't even need to hear anything from you because you're just a sales guy. You don't know anything about the car itself. I'm checking the car out to see if it's good or not, right? If a company won't let you do that, it's BS. Oh, for insurance reasons. Well, hey, they can have their sales guy drive it to the mechanic. You do not need to say, okay, I'll buy it. Ah, oh, yeah, great. Your guys are telling me to. You think they're going to tell you the truth about a used car? Read the fine print. It's going to say, as is, no warranty, right? And they're going to stand behind that if anything goes wrong. Never trust these people. As you said in your thing, uh, the salesman said if issues are found post purchase, he'd be happy to fix them. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they say now. And then he'll deny he even said it in the first place. Bunch of malarkey. It's like I tell people. Never pay for anything until you've seen it's okay. That's what you want to buy. Same thing that, let's say you go to a body shop, you get in a wreck, your car gets fixed. Do not sign that check over to them until you get to road test the car. They might not have fixed it right. Because once you sign the check over, the insurance company says, you're satisfied. We're out of the business now. That's between you and the shop. We're out. We paid you. You're gone, right? Do not give them that check and sign it over until you get the road tested. Because if you get it back, it's not right after you sign the check. Good luck having the body shop fix the problem.
problems. Don't just say, oh no, that existed before the wreck. We had nothing to do with that, right? That's why you don't put the money down until it's been checked out by a pro driving around. Is it making noises? It didn't. Is everything working? I have many customers, they bring me cars after the body work. I'll say, bring it to me when they're done, I'll check it out. And I do a full scan and everything. And I'll say, look at all this crap that's wrong. Don't give me this garbage that's fixed. It needs this stuff. And they will not give them the money until they get it fixed. Because if they have the money, forget it. It's all over then. Mustang Fever says, I got a 2000 Tundra. I want to tell you what happens when I use the ATS cleaner. It's got 185,000 miles. Bought the ATS funeral oil cleaning system. I had a rattling noise for over a year. I even had the cats changed and the noise still was there. I was going nuts. So I put in the ATS fuel product and a quarter tank of gas and ran the heck out of it. After 20 minutes, it started running smooth. There was still a little rattling, so I filled the tank when it was about half a tank and added an extra bottle. Now the noise is gone completely. Then I put the oil cleaner in. The tech says, you got snake oil. Well, I didn't think so. So he drained it out. And then the tech says, it keeps coming out. All the crud came out. What the heck did you use in this car? We can't believe what it got out of it. As far as I'm concerned, this ATS product is no joke and is the real deal. Thanks. I'm amazed by the stuff myself. He didn't pay me anything. He just sends me, everybody around the world sends me stuff. So if you got anything interesting, send it to me. I love trying stuff out. There might be another Bernie out there making some other thing that I could use that's really good. You never know what people come up with. But the guy came up with a great product that gets crud out. Now, you shouldn't have crud in the first place. If you listen to me, change your oil every 5,000 miles, you're not going to get any crud build out. You won't be in this in the first place, right? But if you do get a vehicle used from somebody or didn't take care of it, then you do want to flush the crud out and it can get all that crud out. There's no arguing that. The Toyotas make great vehicles, but like any other vehicle, if you don't change the oil, sludge is going to build up and it's going to cause noise problems, oil burning, all kinds of things. So if you find something like Bernie's ATS that gets rid of it, believe me, the stuff does work. <laughs> I'm not making it up. And you can see this guy had the same thing. He tried it out and said, wow, even the techs at the shop were amazed at the crud that came out of it. The stuff does work. I mean, but like I say, normally you don't even need to use it if you change your oil regularly, but you buy a used car, who knows? G.S. Musen says, is my engine shot? I got a 95 Toyota 4 runner. 220,000 mile V6. It's hard to start. I took it in. Now it's missing on two cylinders and idles rough. I took it to three shops and they all said it either needs a cylinder job, valve job, or rebuild the engine. I'm desperate. All right. Well, I can just about guarantee your engine's gone. Those engines had problems. It's an old 95. They just wear out. You got 220,000 miles. Often that's the lifespan of that particular year because they didn't build them perfectly in 95. A lot of them blew head gaskets. Now, you might check with Toyota. They had a recall on a bunch of those, and Toyota had to replace the head gaskets free. You got 220,000 miles now. I doubt if they cover it, and even if they did, they're just going to do the head gaskets. Your pistons are going to be worn. Your valves are going to be worn. Your cams are going to be worn. The crankshaft's going to be worn. I advise is get another engine. Get a remanufactured engine and put it in. Don't have guys try to band-aid like a guy says, well, I can, I can do a, a head job and a gasket for this much money. No. Get rid of the whole engine. Those things had problems. 220,000 miles, put in a remanufactured engine. Now, if you're lucky and you can find a used engine with lower mileage in a junkyard, I had a customer in Houston do that. They got a real deal. They paid like 800 bucks to the engine having it put in. And what a deal that was, and it ran perfectly fine. But of course, it's not that easy to find good engines in junkyards. A lot of times they lie and they'll say, yeah, that engine's only got 65,000 miles and it really have like 365. You don't know. It's sitting on the floor, pulled out of the car. You have no idea what the actual real mileage is. You're better off getting a good remanufactured engine. Sendib says, my car road gets really hot. I bought a 2023 Mazda CX-5. I noticed in the garage the hood feels hot. My old ones didn't feel hot. Now, do they just run hot or you think I got a problem? There's all kinds of reasons. Back in the day, they used to make the hoods with insulating material. You know, originally they used asbestos, which caused lung cancer, but the hood had insulation on the bottom, so the heat wouldn't get to the hood. The main reason they did it was they didn't want it to get hot and ruin the paint and have the paint flake off, plus the insulation on the bottom of your hood, inside where the motor is, quiets it down. You don't hear engine noise as much, right? Who knows? Maybe they didn't even put any insulation. I've seen many cars today 
They make them cheaper that have no insulation on the hood. And of course, the hood is going to get hotter then. You shut off the engine, that's called a heat soak. Then your engine's sitting there, it's hot, but you shut it off. The cooling system's no longer running a fan to cool it. So it actually gets hotter just sitting there than it does driving down the road. And if it's in a garage, it's in an enclosed area, it's going to stay hotter longer. Now, just for giggles, put one in your garage, close the door, and then the next day, leave it outside. And if you got one of those temperature guns, take temperature of the hood, and you'll find out it's going to cool off a lot faster outside than inside your garage. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.